today's topic is the decidua decidua basically is the false bed which is prepared under the progesterone level and composed of the three layers the basal layer which is along with the muscle of the uh, uterus myometrium then next is the spongy layer in which the blastocystum bed and the most inner linear layer is the compact layer these three layers are component of decidua whole of the uterine endometrium undergo proliferation but proliferation is more marked on the posterior wall and fundus of the uterus in midline this more marked thick endometrium at the fundus and posterior wall of the uterus in midline name is given decidua if it persist under the corpus luteum the corpus luteum maintain this placenta or maintain its life if it is undergo atrophy then it is shed off in the menstrual cycle in pieces it is shed off because it separate its two layers are separated number one spongy layer number two compact layer but not the basal layer along with the myometrium it does not shed off it persists there so spongy layer which is shed off and the compact layer because it shed off and new newly formed uh, endothelial proliferation occur you can say decidua so name is given decidua because it fall down in uh, menstrual cycle if the, there is no fertilization no hcc production by the sensitive trophoblast second is in if the pregnancy is there and the blastocystum system bad this bed is again shed off after parturition after the delivery of the fetus so this this is shed off because it both conditions either in menstrual cycle or in the after the delivery because this is separate out and shed off so name is given decidua false bed it doesn't stay there after performing its function so decidua is it is the endometrium of the uterus in pregnant woman so in pregnant woman this name is given uh, the decidua because it at the end of pregnancy after the delivery of fetus it separate out so false bed this endometrial thickening is this what we say that this endometrium of the uterus in it occur in whole of the uterine cavity whole of the uterine cavity now the part of the endometrium of the uterus which undergo proliferation in whole of the uterine cavity that part which is thick posteriorly and on the fundus in the midline that is a name is given decidua bizalis whereas the in the rest of the cavity of the uterus apart from this location that is fundus and posterior wall the endometrium also undergo proliferation but not as much as that of the stated site what we said so there that thick endometrium in the posterior wall and the fundus midline name is given decidua bizalis it is the part of the decidua deep to the conceptus where the blastocystum bed and which form the maternal part of placenta decidua bizalis is the maternal part of placenta the decidua decidua parietalis 
it represent the remaining part of the decidua along the whole inner wall of uterus remaining what we give the name so there is a third variety which is the decidua capsularis it is the the proliferation of the endometrium around the fetus and cover it like a capsule so this is the superficial part of decidua overlying the conceptus and decidua parietalis remaining of the decidua along the whole inner wall of the uterus here is shown that this is the decidua basalis in the fundus it is more thick than the rest of the uterine cavity and this blastocyst which is embedding over here the rest of the uterine cavity along this wall from above downward and from this wall downward this is name is given decidua parietalis in periphery that is the this is the decidua parietalis uh, this one this one is the decidua parietalis whereas the thick this is decidua basalis in which the blastocyst system there is shown a capsule like covering of the blastocyst so name is given decidua capsularis and that is shown over here that <coughs> this is the fetus with the amniotic sac around it this hole is the amniotic sac around that is there is the endometrium proliferation which cover the whole of the fetus all around this one except that here it is very thick and that form the decidua basalis this part is decidua basalis now this part which is all around covering the fetus is decidua capsularis whereas in the periphery of the uterine cavity or the rest of the uterine cavity that is lined with decidua parietalis yeah this one this below is the decidua parietalis similarly here is shown this is the this one is the this one is the decidua parietalis and this is the decidua capsularis and this is decidua basalis over here this thick part development of placenta early development is by rapid proliferation of the trophoblast and development of the chorionic sac at the beginning third week trophoblast is characterized by primary villi the trophoblast that start proliferating and imaginate the sensitive trophoblast at the beginning of third week trophoblast is characterized by primary villi that consist of cytotrophoblastic core covered by sensitive layer during further development mesodermal cells which is extra embryonic mesoderm penetrate the core of the primary villi and grow towards the decidua so this is shown that the cytotrophoblast which is the villus in the primary villus innermost layer inner layer is the cytotrophoblast outer is the sensitive trophoblast this one sensitive trophoblast if the two layers are present cyto inside sensitium outside name is given primary villus the third structure which imaginate is the extra embryonic mesoderm from the chorionic plate which start imaginating and occupy the central position of the villus this is the all these are cut section of the villi uh, then outer is the sensitio and the next to that is the sensitium this is the cyto this is sensitio so this structure of the villus when the this extra embryonic mesoderm this penetrate into villi name is given 
secondary villus the tertiary villus is the name given when this one this extra membranic mesoderm over here change into arteries and veins or capillaries that is the venous capillaries and the arterial capillaries these are the venous capillary uh, given the uh, red color because it has the oxygenated blood whereas the below is the uh, arterial capillaries which have deoxygenated blood then when extra membranic mesoderm change in villi into capillary system venous arterial venous capillary system the name is given tertiary villi so what we say the two layer cyto and sensitio primary villus three layers sensitio cyto and extra membranic mesoderm secondary villus when extra membranic mesoderm change into blood vessels and rest of this extra membranic mesoderm form the connective tissue of the villus this one around the blood vessels connective tissue so this all is the so you can see that the endothelial lining of blood vessel are round that is number 1 number 2 is the connective tissue derived from the extra membranic mesoderm number 3 cytotrophoblast this one cytotrophoblast and then next is the sensitive so there are four barriers between the uh, blood of the mother mother blood is over here around the villi and the fetal blood this one is present in the capillaries that is the endothelial lining connective tissue cyto and sensitive four barrier between the fetal and maternal blood here is shown that this is the sensitive layer green dark green and this the light green is the cytotrophoblastic layer this one uh, this one is the cytotrophoblast and outer is the sensitium and this inner red layer is the extra embryonic mesoderm extra embryonic mesoderm which line this whole inner side of cyto this one all in the side of the cyto this one name is given chorionic plate and this is the extra embryonic mesoderm which line in side of the cyto extra embryonic mesoderm there are four plate of the extra embryonic mesoderm number 1 to form the chorionic plate that is so with reference to this name uh, up to this this whole is the chorionic plate second component of extra embryonic mesoderm is connecting stalk which connect the embryo with the uh, with the cytotrophoblast or chorionic plate third component of extra embryonic mesoderm is surround the amniotic sac somatic mesoderm and fourth part is we surround the yolk sac all around splanchnic mesoderm with reference to the chorionic plate this cavity this one cavity is this cavity is name is given uh, that is the uh, chorionic cavity this is the chorionic cavity another point over here is to observe is that these there there is seen the primary villi over here the cytotrophoblast is protruding out which is covered over by sensitium sensitium layer this one and this is the cyto that is forming the primary villi initially similarly this is also primary villus having cytotrophoblast inner and sensitium outside secondary villus is also seen over here that is the cytotrophoblast uh, uh, is the invaginated 
by this extrambryonic mesoderm. This invagination of the extrambryonic mesoderm is from chorionic plate. This chorionic plate, we, what we said, hole that invaginate in the villi. So when this extrambryonic mesoderm invaginate and surrounded by cyto, then sensitio, three components, sensitio, cyto, and the extrambryonic mesoderm. The name is given secondary villus. Outside sensitium, there is multiple lacunae or gaps appear. That is the sensitium shows the vacuoles. These vacuoles, they fuse with each other just like as vacuoles are seen. These are the, this is the one vacuole, this is the next, and this is the, so, so these many vacuoles over here, they fuse together a large space a large space in the sensitium which later on act as intervillous space that is the intervillous space in between the villi another problem over here is that sensitio topoblast that is the eroding layer which erode the decidobazalus and go on penetrating in decidobazalus when it approaches the three quarter are penetrate into decidobazalus and one quarter decidobazalus is left what happen is the cytotrophoblast cross through the syncytium and attach to the decidobazalus to limit the proliferation of syncytium and not only this but also here when the villi approach cytotrophoblast that combine with other villus with the cytotrophoblast so this form whole a component over here that is the cytotrophoblastic shell which is formed The newly formed structure with outer sensitial layer, middle cytotrophoblast, and most inner extrambryonic mesoderm. So, cyto, then sensitio, then extrambryonic mesoderm. Most outer side is sensitial layer, middle is the cyto, and innermost is the extrambryonic, called the secondary villus. At the third end of third week, mesodermal cell in the core of villus began to differentiate but into small blood vessels. So extrambryonic which has penetrated in secondary villus now start changing into small blood vessels forming villus capillary system. Villus capillary system. Structure composed of the outer sensitial middle cyto and inner capillary network is called tertiary villi. So what is the definition of tertiary villi? If extramdionic mesoderm change into blood vessels, which in turn, it, it has two fate, extramdionic mesoderm, uh, which, which was penetrated in secondary villus. There are two fate. One is change into blood vessels, other is connective tissue. It is surrounded by sensitio and cytotrophoblastic layer. So name is given tertiary villus. Capillary in the tertiary villi make contact with capillary developing in the mesoderm of the chorionic plate. So these vessels finally communicated of the each villus with the chorionic plate blood vessels. Name is given chorionic blood vessels. These vessels chorionic in turn establish contact with intrambryonic circulation through connecting stock. Connecting stock also change into, which is made up of extrambryonic mesoderm, change into blood vessels. Chorionic plate also change into blood vessels. So 
in this way the villi communicate with the chorionic vessels chorionic vessel then converge toward the umbilical vessels and umbilical blood is carried to the fetus now there is a one danger that sensitive topoplast may go on penetrating into the distal vesicles and may come in contact with the myometrium of the uh, uterus so and it may even penetrate through the muscle of the uterus traversing through it and outside it may attach to the surrounding intestine the bladder and the other structures in the abdomen which is the condition of the chorio carcinoma in which the villi that uh, the, that is the syncytium go on penetrating it to avoid this syncytium has should be limited or it should be limited so what happen is cytotrophoblast you can see over here that cross through the syncytium cross through the syncytium and attach to the decidua epithelis here it will attach to the decidua epithelis similarly cytotrophoblast that is passing toward the decidua epithelis it not only that these cytotrophoblast that pass to the decidua epithelis but also the area between the this villus and this villus by proliferation of cells is bridged by the cytotrophoblastic cell so this is the also this is itself is the cytotrophoblastic villus part of the villus second this one is also cytotrophoblastic villus and intervillous space near the decidua epithelis is bridged by cytotrophoblast by this bridging it enclose a cavity underneath it which is bounded by the all around syncytiotrophoblast all around you can see this in this way by in syncytium is the limited and their further proliferation into decidua is uh that is the stopped it should be stopped it invade two third of the decidua epithelis and one third is left normally one third is left which act as a the maternal part of placenta decidual plate in between this villi this one which attach to the decidua epithelis second this villus which is attached to the decidua epithelis the blood is entering now this bridge between the villi by proliferation cell this whole bridge this one and this one whole bridge this one this whole bridge the name is given cytotrophoblastic shell now, now a shell is formed you can see this this whole layer of cyto toward the embryonic pole embryonic pole name and given where there is embryo in the blastocyst this other end this one name is given ab embryonic pole this side is embryonic pole so this shell is formed this one and by this cytoplasmic shell or circle around the blastocyst which prevent the or which attaches the fetal part of placenta with maternal part here they are attached the fetus part of placenta is the these villi this cytoplasmic cytotrophoblastic shell and intervillous space which is present in the syncytium this space now through this shell this one this part which roof this space the spiral arteries and vein of the uterus are the spongy layer that penetrate in addition to nutritional glands 
their ducts open and that is poured into the intervillous space in between the stem villi or the large villi. So not only that the uh, this uh, blood is poured into this space how it is poured that this in situ to cytotrophoblast the shell which is punctured by the blood vessels arteries and veins of the maternal they pour their blood into the uh, this space and blood start entering Now cytotrophoblastic cell in villi penetrate into overlying syncytium until they reach the overlying reach the overlying the syncytium. Here they establish contact with the similar extensions of the neighboring venous villus system, which I told that bridges are formed by proliferation of the villus blood cytotrophoblastic cells that form the neighboring villus forming a thin outer cytotrophoblastic shell the shell gradually surround the trophoblast entirely and attach the chorionic sac firmly to the maternal endometrial tissue villi that connect from the chorionic plate to the decidua abdalis that is called stem villi are anchoring will lie from the stem will lie the bra the branch from the that branch from the side of stem will lie are the free will lie a terminal will lie actually stem will lie have intermediate will lie then intermediate further give the free will lie through which exchange of nutrients and other factors will occur these will lie are bath with blood in the interval space free free bath so where the exchange can occur embryo is attached to its trophoblastic shell by connecting stock later develop into umbilical cord which is connection between placenta and embryo there is a good picture that is shown the stem will lie this one and this one is the cytotrophoblastic shell the soul how it is created that cells of this one stem will lie this they start proliferating to this direction similarly this stem will lie that cells start proliferating to this direction both meet with each other and they form a bridge between the two will lie this is not only the bridge but limited the further penetration of this sensitial layer or bound the sensitial layer inside it that is totally bounded it cannot further proliferate or penetrate into the tissue this all is bounded by this all cytotrophoblastic this shell or uh, this hole now this stem will lie this which attached to this and further attached to the decidua they give the side branching this one is the branching which are the terminal villi they have blood vessels in it that is the vein and arteries the veins carry the oxygenated blood because the villi when they are bath around all around with the maternal blood this is the maternal blood which is entering this one by the spiral arteries because the syncytium erode the blood vessels before the shell is formed and that blood vessel is opening through this shell and pour its blood with speed into intervillous space these are the arteries which are pouring the blood in speed this opening of these arteries is guarded by the a special plug through which what is now said that blood is not entering into the space which means red cell and white cells if the red cells is not entering no oxygen is entering so oxygen it is the plasma which is said to be 
present in the intervillous space and no more blood is present in the intervillous space. The plasma carry poor oxygen level and the which is transferred to the fetus. Oxygen is said to be high concentration of oxygen is the tratogenic for the fetus. So to avoid the tratogenicity of the oxygen, the maternal blood is not directly entering or red cells carrying the oxygen is entering into villous space. Rather, in new observation, it is seen that they are the, it is filled with plasma, which is filtered through this plug, filtered through this plug, carrying the, in addition to that, the, the glands also open over here, having full of nutrition, which is poured into intervillous space. Third is the veins, which carry the, on the sides of the intervillous space, carry the blood back to the maternal circulation a uterine blood vessels. So blood is poured through this spiral artery into intervillous space or we say plasma. Then veins carry back from here. Blood bath this villi. You can see this terminal villi all around covered with maternal blood. And this sensitio cyto connective tissue and endothelium of blood vessel, which is act as a placental barrier that by diffusion the various components which pass and enter into the venous capillaries of the villus so veins carry villus veins carry the oxygenated blood and the arterial blood which is bringing the deoxygenated blood carbon dioxide gas is poured into the intervillous space then the waste product of the fetus that is poured it take up the nutrition like amino acid, glucose, water, and hormones, which enter into the fetal circulation. So, this is the site of exchange. Terminal villi is the site of exchange between the mother and the fetus. So, fetal part of placenta is this whole villi system, terminal villi, stem villi, and with intervillous space, which is also the fetal part, whereas the Above that, here's the decidua pedalis, its spiral arteries, glands, and veins will be the maternal part of placenta. Now, the villous vessels you can see now communicate with the are receiving the chorionic vessels. Chorionic vessels receiving from various villi blood and carry to the finally. Here is it is bringing the blood from various villi, this one and on both sides all around the conceptus they form the umbilical vein and umbilical vein carry the oxygenated blood to the fetus umbilical artery which is bringing the deoxygenated blood and that is passed on to the villus capillaries or uh, uh, arterial capillaries and from where it is exchanged back into intervillous space in maternal blood and maternal blood then dispose of these waste product and carbon dioxide gas. Chorionic villi cover the entire chorionic sac. A chorionic sac grow. The villi associated with decidua basalis become compressed. So blood supply to them is reduced. So they degenerate. As you know, the decidua capsule is surrounding the conceptus. When it grow, these villi that disappear are stretched out. And that part is without villi. Ab embryonic pole opposite to the decidua bedalis. Ab embryonic pole where these chorionic villi disappear. This produces due to stretch or growth of the fetus. Capsularis undergo avascular injury, that is avascular bare area, uh, the smooth chorion called the chorionic villi. Now, villi well grow toward the decidua basalis. Name is given the chorionic frontosum, whereas the opposite side, pe, now the name is given chorionic levi. These villi associated with decidua basalis rapidly increase branch fusely 
and enlarge this form blushy area if chorionic sac uh, blushy area of chorionic sac uh, that is the bushy area is form the bushy area of chorionic sac the chorionic frondosum chorionic frondosum mean bush like the arbillus chorion the center has two parts fetal part it is formed by chorionic frondosum maternal part is formed by distrobilus fetal part is attached by cytotrophoblastic shell which anchor the chorionic sac to distrobilus endometrial vessels arteries and veins pass through the gaps in cytoplasmic shell and enter the interbilus space here is shown that is the this is the tertiary villus and this is the umbilical vein and arteries which communicated with the this chorionic veins they collect the blood from all the villi and now the here is the arterial venous capillaries this is the arterial venous capillaries terminal villi where the exchange occur then it is carried to the stem villi stem villi then to the chorionic vessel then to the then to the connecting stalk here is the uh, picture of the these are the uh, villus capillaries artery arterial capillaries venous this is the uh, venous capillary this is the arterial capillary uh, arterial capillaries are deoxygenated blood below and the red is the venous capillary carrying oxygenated blood this is a connective tissue this one is the syncytium and this is the cytotrophoblast here is shown that is the full placenta this whole one this one is the chorionic plate this one chorionic plate give villi all around this one is the villi all around this one and these villi they are penetrated into the syncytium the villi attach to the this is the decidua bedalis decidua bedalis is the this is the maternal part of placenta or mother part around that is the this is the muscle of the uterus inside muscle this one third of the decidua total decidua which is not penetrated by the villi or syncytium this one is the cytotrophoblastic shell this one this is the cytotrophoblastic shell where the fetal part and maternal part they are attached. this is cytoplasmic shell cytotrophoblastic shell by penetration of villi the decidua is cut off and a remnant of the decidua which is protruding over here in intervillous space these are the placental septum these are the septums and which give on outside the outside surface of the uh, this placenta it form a cube like structures the anoem is given cotyledons cotyledons are 15 to 20 toward the maternal side toward the fetal side how to recognize the fetal side of placenta by the umbilical cord and radiating vessel from it this radiating vessel under the amniotic sac this is the amniotic layer and this is the radiating vessel so how to recognize the placenta maternal and fetal part by the umbilical cord fetal part and by the cotyledons which are form on the surface of the placenta these are the spiral arteries of the um, um, this the spiral arteries of the decidua or the maternal blood vessels pouring its blood or showering its blood this you can see that is showering blood with speed into the intervillous space then on the sides they are present the Uh, veins maternal veins on this side on this side 
and blood after showering it return to the back to the veins now decidual septa is not complete it does not communicate with the decidual uh, with the chorionic plate there is a gap this one between the septa through which the blood can pass from one intervillous space to the other are communicating all the intervillous spaces they are communicating through this gap which is present over here each cotyledon on the surface have two to three stem villi where the septum is formed this is the septum which is further it is an incomplete barrier in the passage of blood in intervillous space shape of placenta is determined by persistent area giving the placenta a discoid shape disc like chorionic villi invade the decidua basalis is eroded to entangle the intervillous space this erosion produces several wedge shape area of decidua the placental septum which i told you which project toward the chorionic plate the septa provides fetal part of placenta with irregular convex area or cotyledons each cotyledon consists of two or more stem villi and many branch villi later the decidua basalis is complete replaced by cotyledons decidua capsularis the layer of decidua overlying the chorionic sac from the capsule over the external surface of the sac here is shown the decidua capsularis this one is the decidua capsularis this here all as conceptus enlarges decidua capsularis contact fuses with decidua parietalis that make in contact you can see over here this is the decidua parietalis this one below and decidua capsularis they fuse with each other and they get loss of the villi over it so name is given chorionic levi at 28 week reduce blood supply to decidua capsularis causes it to degenerate and disappear decidua parietalis is confined to the posterior wall and the fundus in the midpoint what we said decidua basalis is confined to posterior wall and fundus of the uterus rest of the uterine cavity is lined by decidua parietalis so this is the difference between the two the decidua basalis is in the posterior wall and fundus of the uterus in midpoint rest of the cavity you can see over here this hole is the decidua basalis it on the posterior wall as well as on the fundus where the rest of the uterine cavity this one this is the uterine cavity and this rest this is the decidua parietalis this one this hole is the decidua but over here in the this this is the fundus part of the uterus this is the posterior wall so this thickeny in the midpoint is decidua basalis here is also shown very good decidua basalis in which villus system is penetrating and this hole is the decidua parietalis rest of the endometrium here is again shown this is the uh, the decidua basalis this one these are the maternal veins and arteries penetrating into the intervillous space this one is the villi stem villi this hole is the this hole is the stem villi this one right from chorionic plate to the decidua they are communicate with each other by cytotrophoblastic shell this hole is the shell by proliferation of the cytotrophoblast and at shell is the junction of fetal with placental part with the fetal part with the maternal part these are stem villi and their capillaries are communicated with chorionic vessel these are the chorionic vessel which ultimately over here join with the umbilical
at 10 to 8 weeks maternal blood is derived from the lacony that develop in sensitive or trophoblast yeah these are the lacony which communicate with each other from the intervillous space large blood vessel filled result coalesces and large blood filled results coalesces that lacony combine enlargement of the lacony network intervillous space is divided into compartments by the placental septum there is free communication between the compartment because the septa uh, the placental septa do not reach the chorionic plate which I told you that spaces are communicated maternal blood enter the intervillous space from spiral endometrial arteries in deciduous vellus spiral artery pass through a gap in cytotrophoblastic shell discharge blood into intervillous space and this space is drained by endometrial veins which also penetrate the cytotrophoblastic shell numerous branch villi arise from the stem villi they are showered with maternal blood that circulate through the intervillous space blood in this space carry oxygen and nutrition materials maternal blood also contain fetal waste carbon dioxide gas and salts amino acid uh, amniotic sac in large amnion and smooth chorion fuse to form the amniotic membrane this membrane adhere to the decidua parietalis this may rupture due the labor allow amniotic fluid to escape out here is shown this is one is the stem villi and branch so first branching is the intermediate villi and then is the terminal villi best site of exchange between maternal and fetal blood is terminal villi the stem villi that this one continue to attach with the decidua and that make it a support or attachment this layer is the cytotrophoblastic shell which is the junction of the fetal with the maternal part and this whole space this one this one is the intervillous space where uh, maternal blood is present from chorionic plate progressive branching occur in the villus tree as stem villi give further intermediate and terminal villi you can see this this hole is the stem villus in the middle here uh, does not exchange anything but the intermediate and the especially the terminal villi where the exchange occur each villus has core of connective tissue blood vessel in the center surrounded by so if you take the villus what does it composed of four things that is blood vessel covered over by connective tissue in the center next to that is the cytotrophoblast second layer outer is the sensitive trophoblast sensitive layer act as a selective permeable barrier across which the transplacental transport occur sensitive act as a semi permeable barrier sensitive layer removes fetal waste and itself produce placental hormone which enter into maternal circulation as embryonic pole will i continue to grow and expand giving rise to chorionic frontosum at the embryonic pole will i degenerate so called chorionic levi or smooth chorion fetal part of placenta is attached to the maternal part by cytotrophoblastic shell definite placenta is composed of chorionic plate on its fetal aspect attach where it attach umbilical cord radiating vessel separated by the intervening intervillous space and maternal part is that is pseudo abdalus on its maternal aspect 